Well, good evening. I'm Dr. Douglas Dennis from Denver, Colorado, and it's my privilege to moderate this OR Live event this evening, which is being held at the Hogue Orthopedic Institute in Irvine, California. This event uh, was developed with three main areas of total knee arthroplasty that we would like to focus on, one being the potential benefits of mobile bearing technology, two, implantation of total knee replacement using a gap balancing technique, and three, the latest in the technological advancements of antioxidant polyethylene. We are privileged this evening to have a very distinguished faculty. Uh, first, our local host, Dr. Robert Gorab, who is a skilled surgeon and the chief medical officer of the Hogue Orthopedic Institute. Bob is going to be performing a live total knee arthroplasty uh, surgery implantation of a rotating platform total knee using the gap balancing technique. To, <clears throat> in addition uh, to Dr. Gorab, also Dr. Richard Komastek from Knoxville, Tennessee, here to my left. Uh, Rick is the Roddy Distinguished Professor of Bioengineering at the University of Tennessee and someone that I've worked with the last two decades in the study of total knee kinematics. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Dr. John Collier from Hanover, New Hampshire. John has been a professor for over 30 years at Dartmouth College and certainly one of the world leaders in polyethylene chemistry as well as the wear of that material. I think with that being said, I'd like to now go to Dr. Gorab in the operating room who will present the case that he's going to be doing this evening. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining us from the Hogue Orthopedic Institute in Irvine, California. I hope you'll find this live uh, surgical demonstration informative and valuable for your surgical experience. Uh, I'd like to first introduce our staff today. I have Dr. Clayne Hales of Anesthesia at the head of the table, providing excellent anesthesia with uh, spinal anesthetic with a femoral nerve block. I have Susie Porter, my nurse practitioner, who also has a tremendous experience in knee replacement uh, and hip replacement surgery with me for over the past 10 years. Steve Davis, RNFA, and we have Christine Woodward, uh, our uh, surgical tech, who also has uh, been with us for many, many years and has uh, has great experience with this particular technique and this particular instrumentation. So I think what we'll do first is uh, uh, go through the patient history, and then we'll head back to Dr. Dennis. Uh, this particular patient is a 65-year-old male uh, attorney. He has a very active individual. He sustained a severe right knee injury in the Marine Corps in 1969, had an open medial meniscectomy, ACL debridement, probable medial meniscus, uh, medial car, uh, collateral ligament repair, in 1973 and has had subsequent arthroscopic debridement. Now, past treatment has included all the typical modalities on a conservative basis, including bracing, visco supplementation, intraarticular steroid injections, and multiple attempts at anti-inflammatories. Uh, as far as his activity interests, he's an extremely avid ath athlete, former uh, mountaineer and mountain ranger in the uh, Sierra National Forest. Uh, he enjoys hiking, cycling, kayaking, skiing, and tennis, and he's limited currently by his arthritic condition for all of his activities ex except for some cycling. His knee exam shows a previous uh, medial oblique incision, which we'll show you later. It has three degrees of mechanical varus. Reasonable passive major range of motion with a fixed flexion contracture of between 8 and 26 degrees and absent ACL function. So our, our x-rays are shown here, and I think what we'll do is uh, quickly go to the x-rays on the, on the wall in the room, and we can identify a little bit clearer of the plan. Uh, his, uh, on the left is a film of an of, uh, AP view or PA view of the knee in slight flexion, which shows a quite symmetric and severe joint space collapse. Uh, shows uh, a fairly significant defect on the medial tibial plateau. Uh, I've outlined and, and superimposed templates of the tibial component. I've outlined uh, measurements of the tibial articular angle we'll choose to use for this particular resection, and it looks like about a 4 millimeter resection medially and about a 10 millimeter resection laterally. Um, on, the la on the lateral view in the center, you can see he has some tibiofemoral subluxation, not, not un unusual for an anterior cruciate deficient knee, and fairly significant patellofemoral arthritis. So if we could go back to, uh, to, to Dr. Dennis now, uh, I'd like to have Doug j just go through with you 
uh, a short history and, and, and his experience and some of the technology associated with rotating platform total knee arthroplasty, and then Dr. Comistek, Rick Comistek, to go through some of the, the kinematics and the modeling that's been done with this particular knee system that I think offers tremendous advantages for uh, highly uh, active and demanding patients uh, from, uh, from, from, a, from an, inter, an exercise interest standpoint. So, Doug and uh, Rick, please, if you could take it back. And That'd be terrific. Uh, Bob, this looks like it'd be a very exemplary case that we'll all um, certainly learn a lot from. Uh, if we could go ahead and uh, bring up uh, some of our slides.